obviously uh, Australia winning this match will dorm the series as we would say and South Africa to win it well it really brings them back into the series four games left or three games left and uh, you win this one well you're right in it so Sean Pollock has got his work cut out there's no doubt about it uh, Adam Gilchrist he hasn't really fired in the one day series so far Roger he's so dangerous you almost feel that at some stage he's going to kick in Yes, indeed. And uh, really, if you look at the Australian side, I reckon they've been playing at about 70%, 70 maybe. Uh, Gilchrist certainly uh, hasn't fired yet. Ponting, the captain, um, has had a really wretched run in three matches. So there's a lot of the Australian batsmen uh, that need to score runs here today. First delivery from Pollock, played nicely by Gilchrist. It's cut away, it'll be the first boundary of the match. Short and wide from Pollock. Gilchrist doesn't often miss those. Well, it's certainly a wicket that if they don't bowl a good line and a good length, they will get whacked, as Gilchrist uh, does on this occasion. And uh, unlike Sean Pollock, although he does tend sometimes uh, early up just to take an over or two to get into his rhythm, but that was wide and right in the arc for Gilchrist and he gave it the business and a no ball called and that should be the next boundary good value for shot at Bloemfontein Goodyear Park Pollock battled in the last match with no balls one could say it cost dearly and again he started that way yes they were much more guilty than the Australians uh, of extras 17 in one match, 16 and another, 17 and the third. And they're going to have to uh, tighten up on that side. Otherwise, that 270 that you're talking about, Patrick, uh, is going to be more than possible. It's well played down the ground. Now you can really see the value for shot here off the back foot. Just look at that uh, outfield. It was just nothing more than a push from Hayden. That's pulled away. That'll go for four. Good shot. It wasn't that uh, short of a delivery, but he picked it up so well. Yeah, a little bit high on the bat. wasn't uh, perfectly timed. But certainly enough bat on it to uh, send it away to this very, very fast uh, boundary here. Driven down the ground. Kirsten can't cut it off. That'll go all the way. Just a little push. And the ball still runs quite quickly hitting the boundary board. Well, there's a typical indication of this very, very fast uh, outfield here at Goodyear Park in Bloemfontein. Nothing more than a push from Hayden. And once it had beaten that mid-off, it was four all the way. No run. Ends the over. 25 for no loss. It's a good shot. That is a very good shot. Not too much wrong with the ball, though. And it has been dispatched quite easily for four. Just before the ropes. That's his area, isn't it? That's a great shot. He's just left into this. Picked it up off back of a length. And uh, it's his area. There it is. It's a goodish delivery. And he's just swung through the line. As we've seen most of the games, uh, the last three games, that's where his release shot is. He's looked to hit it over the mid-wicket area. Quite interesting also to see uh, where he's batting in his stance. His bat is on a roundabout off stump, so he can get across and play that stroke. Nine over's gone, 33 for none. It's a good shot, three extra cover. Not too much wrong with the delivery again, and that's four runs. 
That's a great shot. He's, he's just given that a bit of a, just a little bit too much width. He's been able to free his arms here and away it goes. And he's managed to find the gap this time, which I'm sure will uh, help him. But I think the key, as you said there, is to highlight who the good bowlers are. And there you see Makai giving him a little bit too much width, which he normally should be tucking him up. But he's just freed his arms and Gilchrist just managed to find the gap on the offside. Not the most elegant shot, but it's very, very effective. As I said, I think the key of these guys that have played so long is to highlight who the good bowlers are. And uh, Makaya has been bowling superbly in this series. If they're going to just see him out, there's other bowlers they can pick off maybe. Well, that's a little bit leg side, so you can work that away. There is a sweeper, Nicky Bayer. Just a single. No ball called. Scramble through for a quick single. been a major problem this Steve this is something that is so unusual to see from an Australian perspective South African perspective sorry yes it is I haven't uh, I know the ethic of the South Africans and they look in a 50 over match to have extras in single figures so really these these no balls the extra balls are the problems it's not just the one run it's the extra balls as well it's got him Bit of movement off the deck, I think. Matty Hayden's having a cursory glance at the track as well, but Roger Tomarco has struck a thin edge, and Mark Boucher doesn't drop those. That's brilliant from him, and uh, just as well he got that no ball out the way, because the last thing he needed was to get a no ball, on a, a wicket on a no ball. And as you said, I think there was just a touch movement there. There was a little bit away from him. It seems to have gone up the slope a bit. It's, uh, it's gone more than a touch, I think, and that's a, a, a brilliant delivery. Top draw. So there's uh, a big wicket for the South Africans. Matthew Hayden gone for 17, and we're halfway through the 11th over. Australia now 40 for one. So the skip up, Ricky Ponting in the customary number three position. He's uh, been out of uh, form, I suppose, out of luck as well. A couple of uh, interesting dismissals so far in this one-day series. Always the question is asked. When someone is uh, new to the lineup and taking over the new role as captain, does it affect his batting? I think Ricky's uh, a pretty relaxed sort of guy. He's a very, very, very good player. And I don't think that is the case. I think he just needs to get a bit of a start and maybe just curb his natural aggression at the start of his innings just to get a bit of a platform. It's a good shot. Nice and relaxed in front of square on the offside. John G. Rhodes is the chaser, but he might as well give that one up four runs this outfield looks lightning quick um, I think that uh, average score of 214 I think we're going to see that eclipse today Ponting looks 216 sorry I think uh, Ponting looks a little bit uh, he's been in form I would have said but a little bit out of luck more than anything and uh, here the captain South African captain shouting earlier on in the field about trying to run the skipper out again and I think that's been some good skill on the South African side and definitely something that the South Africans will be looking at. They're running between the wickets. Worked away leg side. So Mackay and Tini just struggling a little bit on this over. Of course, uh, right and left hand batting combination. Now you have to adjust your line. Good work from Graham Smith. Two runs. That's always been a talking point the Australians opening the batting with two left-hand pairs. I know it's uh, with Gary and uh, Gary Kirsten and Herschel Gibbs. It's been brilliant for South Africa because it always disrupts the bowler's line and length. And I think immediately we see a right and a left-hand combination here. All of a sudden, the bowlers are battling a touch. Or well, Mackay is, I think, Telemachus only bowled his one over and most of it was to the left-hander. And he's got his wicket. Got that away as well down the third man. Should be two more to Ricky Ponting. Gary Kirsten down at third man. Not the quickest these days. Always gives 100% uh, though to Kirsten. Yes, it'll be different today, of course, with uh, South Africa leaving Herschel Gibbs out and uh, Graham Smith in the lineup. So it'll be two left handers opening the batting for South Africa today, which we haven't seen for some time. Lots of discussion about whether Gibbs should have played or shouldn't have. I personally believe that uh, he should have played. I think he's such a wonderful player and such a dangerous player. If he has a good day, 
he alone will make sure that uh, South Africa win a one day up. I think he should be playing uh, in the middle order. Throughout have lined him up. That's the thing about him. He's, uh, you class him as a match winner and he is uh, one, two decent performances. He'll win a match for you. Great. Great shot. That is an outstanding stroke from Ricky Ponting. Didn't try to hit it too high. Just a little bit on the onside for four runs. 53 for one. Down the wicket, middle of the bat. And that goes all the way from Ricky Ponting. He's in good touch, that's for sure, and he's feeling confident. And he knows that the pitch is a good one, and a big score is going to be needed here. This is a very good shot. He's run down the wicket, he's given it all the weight of the bat behind that. And that's a very long boundary, but it's hit the sweet spot. Well timed by the Australian captain. Slight shimmy down the wicket. Magnificent shot. I think what made it such a good shot, it was, it was really not in the zone. In actual fact, he had to, he had to uh, make the shot. So 71 for one, end of the 16th over. You see that shot again. He had yes. to open his stance a little bit. You're right, Pat. He had to make that... Uh or well, he had to give himself enough room to put it into the slot and hit it nicely. Well, Ponting's got the helmet off, it's pretty warm, and that's because they're going to have a drink. And that's the score sheet. 16 overs gone, 71 for one. Hayden on 17 out, and Gilchrist 25, Ponting 24, we'll have a drink as well. Nicely placed, that'll be two. Big field, the biggest in South Africa. Hard to defend. So Gilchrist on 34, Ponting on 31. Gilchrist has uh, been batting uncharacteristically today. 58 balls for his 34, just three fours. Got him! Roger Tullamarcus has struck again, bang on target. And that is a big wicket. Gilchrist will be extremely disappointed with that stroke, I think, once he sits in the change room and has a look at the replay. Big breakthrough. That's a great breakthrough for South Africa. Exactly what they needed. Gilchrist soaked up a few too many deliveries there. Not his usual self. And he just misses this one. I think it's a slower delivery. Not as... Oh, it's just come back at him a touch and hit the base of middle stump. That's actually a, a wonderful delivery. And Telemachus certainly shows his appreciation. So Gilchrist now goes for 34. Three fours only in that 34. Australia up 87 for two. So Damien Martin, 30 years of age, just over 2,000 one day international runs, averaging uh, just a shade under 40. And goes at just under five per six balls face. So that's a good record overall. Sweeper on the offside, he's got some work to do, it's Andrew Hall, he's not going to get this one. That's a good start for Australia. A long hop from Nicky Boyer. That's something we've come to expect from Damien Martin, his timing, he's hardly hit this. His timing has been impeccable and he's just leant on it, giving it a bit of a nudge and away it goes. And it's beaten Andrew Hall by a good 10 metres. He's such a good striker of the ball, not a lot of spin. That's the length that he uh, has to bowl, Nicky Boyer. Of course, Martin, uh, we know, is one of those guys who likes to get on top of the ball and early. Five ballers used so far by Sean Pollock. All fairly tidy. Edge and slip is very wide. He's going to run away for four, so uh, that'll be a major frustration, I think, for... The South African fielders, particularly the skipper, Sean Pollock. Yeah, head down, hands on his knees. He knows it's an opportunity that's gone by. Jock Callis seemed a little bit scrambled there, but something that happens, he mixes up his pace beautifully, and it's only a little bit of an effort ball, not a lot of foot movement by Martin, and it goes through the vacant second slip area. 
Maybe looking to work that a bit square, Martin. Looking for a couple here. Good placement. Andrew Hall's been doing quite a bit of work sweeping on the leg side. Two more. He's got that through for four. Wasn't too far away from Mark Boucher. He moved a long, long way to his right. And a frustrating over for Callas. 25 gone, 107 for two. Definitely very frustrating that for them. He's actually played this intentionally between the keeper, but got it a touch fine. It's bounced a bit on him. And unfortunately for South Africa, eluded Mark Boucher. Just a little bit of extra bounce there, and maybe just a bit finer than he thought. And Boucher not quite getting there. Gone over the top as Ricky Ponding this time, and he's played that beautifully. That is a lovely shot, just short of the rope, four runs. Good use of the feet. Played this game before, Mark, he said. Eyeing that long on area. He's just come down the wicket. A little shuffle, and punched that straight over Roger Tillamarcus's head. Well, not straight over, a long way over. One bounce, and into the sideboards. You can see the intent here, in the Australian batsman exactly what they intend doing balls they can't put away for four they're looking to rotate the strike score singles off haven't changed the field In the FOR, and he's got it uh, between Nicky Bia and also Roger Telemarkin. I think that's going to run away again. There's three fielders converging, and none are going to get there. So that's the second boundary in the same region. Off that over from Nicky Bia. 26 overs gone now. 117 for two. Partnerships are obviously very important in any form of uh, cricket. 40 runs for the first week between Hayden and Gilchrist was uh, a pretty good start. Not their normal brisk start that they like to go at. 47 for the second week of Ponting and Gilchrist. And now 38 off just 45 balls between Martin and Ponting. Sean Pollock back in the attack. Worked away mid-wicket. Can't bowl that sort of line to uh, Ricky Ponting when he's playing well. His timing is also good. Andrew Hall has <laughs> done a lot of work on that region so far in this match. And there's still plenty of overs to go. Three runs off the first ball of the over. I think Pollock will be looking to try and keep it a lot tighter than that. Ricky Ponting batted superbly today. 50 up, 63 deliveries. Certainly someone who was out of luck, really, not out of form in the first part of the series. And some great fielding and some great run outs from the South Africans. Three fours. That's his uh, 29th One Day International 50. Now there's a big shout from uh, Sean Pollock. Not too far away from an LBW point of view. He's having another uh, appeal there. Is Sean Pollock and the answer he's got is that it's too high. Now that is interesting. Pollock looking a bit disgusted with this decision. That, I think, looks like to be a little bit of an inside edge as well. Height, I don't think, is a concern. Oh, well, it's gone away past the fine leg. And they've turned down the second. Leg by him. Well, there's the 50 partnership, and warmly applauded by their uh, fellow team members. And it's taken 62 deliveries. Oh, that's 
a good shot. That's through. That'll be four. So after 31 overs, 141 for two. And you can see that's his line of attack. He's uh, looking to drift it uh, into that area. Well, he's hoping also that uh, the batsman will make a mistake. This time, this time by Damien Martin. Oh, he's bowled him. He's bowled him. Good bit of bowling that uh, from uh, Nicky Bayer. Beautifully bowled. Once too often, Damien Martin goes for the sweep. And that's the wicket that South Africa dearly, dearly needed. I think the key here, Roger, was that uh, although he played with the five-man leg side field, he kept coming around the wicket. Beautiful drift, holds his line, and uh, he plays right over the top of that. So uh, he's dismissed for 24, and uh, this uh, trick has worked for the South Africans. So Damien Martin bowled for 24, Australia 143 for three. And the next man in, Darren Lehman. Darren Lehman, who could be so effective in the middle of the over, he's got uh, plenty of overs to play with, and another very, very dangerous uh, Australian batsman, highly successful in uh, domestic cricket back in Australia, and thoroughly deserved now his elevation to the national side. He's played 74 matches, of course, and uh, that's over quite a long period. And considering where he bats, Average of nearly 35 is very good. And straight away, finding uh, the gap there. And immediately, uh, right-hand, left-hand combination again, which is going to cause problems for the bowlers. Yes, this is a big enough outfield, and uh, you don't normally have to hit it so hard. He's just tucked it to the leg side, and then you full well if there's uh, two in it. So very well played by Darren Lehman. Five men on the onside for Nicky Bier to the left-hander. And again, finding the gap this time on the offside. Looking for two, and they'll come back comfortably. So, the end of the 32nd over, 147 for three. Martin, the last man uh, to be dismissed. Bowled by uh, Nicky Bier, going on the sweep. And that's flicked away very, very fine and uh, frustration for Pollock as it speeds away to the boundary. What a lovely little shot this is by Ricky Ponting, just allowing it to come uh, into his body line. And then just uh, glances it, walks right across the wicket. And the pressure's already on Pollock. First ball, he's uh, achieved the boundary. That takes him to 64. The Australian score now to 151. And Ricky Ponting really now starting to look uh, extremely dangerous. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. Has he found the gap? He certainly has. There's two men back on that uh, leg side boundary, but perfectly, perfectly bisected. Yes, he's uh, grown in stature here today. He always looked like he was going to get a big one. This time on the back foot, just swivels. Allows it to come onto the bat, into the gap. That's his seventh four. Ricky Ponting, is it also one six? Oh, it's slashed away. <laughs> Frustration again. That's very well fielded down on the boundary there. Gary Kirsten, I think it is, down there. Yes, sir. Uh, Saving what looked like a certain boundary was wide, was slashed away by Ponting. Kirsten doing, making a valiant effort, getting there in time, and then on the second grab, just uh, avoids the boundary, and uh, more importantly, just two runs taken there. Pulled away, well in front of square, and that'll beat everybody and go for four. Beautiful shot.
Yes, he's in tremendous form, in tremendous control. The Australian captain this time hitting it in front of square through Marwicket, keeping it down. And uh, the sweeper there out on the square boundary, having no chance to cut uh, his uh, eighth four. Takes him to 79. Quickly into position. Well played. So problems for Telemarcus. Uh, certainly in provincial cricket here in South Africa. He uh, has a bit of a reputation of not uh, coming back too well in his second and third spells. Oh, that's a good delivery. Much better delivery. Down the wicket, and that's a superb shot. And that will be one bounce ball. Well, we just mentioned it. It's the time, time for these guys to start opening up. Down the wicket, mid on, mid off, up. Punting taking him on early certainly making his intentions clear now striking it beautifully 84 runs 88 balls Patrick Simcots will take over from me thank you Roger Big shot, I think it might be going down the leg, and another attempt for a run out. Double play, Steve. It's all happening now, there it is. A huge appeal there from Makaya, or LBW. I think it's just drifting down, You'll sure we'll see Umpire Orchard. Not off the crease. And then, obviously, the ever alert, Jonty Rhodes. Pitching on off stump. Pretty close that. I think might feel a little bit upset. That might have clipped leg stump. No, I think there was enough doubt there, Steve. Wide of the crease. And John T. Rhodes, quick as a flash, thought, well, maybe if I hit, he could have been out. Bowling figures so far, McIntini's bowled well. Telemarcus exceptionally well. He continues. That's short, hooked away, top edge, and it'll run away for four. Well, you bowl short, you pay the price. Yeah, you're always going to, very difficult. It's a plan they've obviously got against Lehman. But uh, around the wicket, try and get it up in his chest area, stop him from scoring so freely. But as you say there, it's too short over the top of the head and that's very difficult to defend. This boundary on a good day is difficult because of the size of the field and when you're getting hit square of the wicket, it's always going to be difficult to stop the, stop the run rate escalating and it, and it has. It's climbing now up to five, five to the over and I think Australia are staring a a biggish total down here. Leg side again, that should run away for four. Well, the gamble's not paying off. Andrew Hall is not a frontline bowler. And you've got to back your frontliners before you back a part-timer who really hasn't bowled at all in the series. Bowled four overs. It's a big ask too from him, uh, coming into the bowling attack in the 37th over, 38th over. The Australian scoring at 5 plus and over now to ask him to come in and do a containing job, try and peg him back. As we've seen, Ricky Ponting in fine form, getting across the off stump there. 91, 96 balls, 10 fours and a 6. Chopped away, just be the single. And that brings up the 50 partnership. Just 37 deliveries. So 193 for 3 of the 38. Outside edge, it'll run away. And that'll bring the 100. Ricky Ponting goes to 100, the first one against South Africa. 
outside edge of Jock Callis. Callis can't believe it, but his teammates can. Well done, Ricky Ponting. It's a good comeback. That's absolutely brilliant by Ricky Ponting. He's batted superbly. As we said at the beginning of the game today, really, there it is. He's just opened the face of the bat there. Got a full face on it and run it down. Intentional stroke. Maybe not as fine as he thought, but absolutely brilliant. 104 balls, 11 fours, 1 6, 55 scoring shots. Short from Callis. Punished by Ricky Ponting. Well, Pollock will have to hold on tight here. Yeah. Jock Callis came around the wicket there and paid the price. In the air, just short of the uh, Well, it didn't look like he picked it up. Picked it up late. That's full. Boyer can't get around to cut it off. It was hit with tremendous power. 223 for 3 after 42. With this away on the leg side has uh, Lehman. He's got that away for four. Gee, he's not wasting any time whatsoever at the moment. That's a fine stroke. Whipped on the leg side again. It's good connection from Lehman. Two fielders are trying to get it. They might as well give up because that's another boundary. So that's another big over for Australia. 43 overs gone now. 236 for three. Hit that one very, very well in the air for some time, but uh, wide of Nicky BS, that's another boundary. Worked away too long on, it'll be the singles. That brings up the 100 stand between these two in very, very good time as well. So this is terrific batting from these two experienced players. 44 overs gone, 243 for three. That's away. Three, four more. Full toss and bunted back past the bowler and also the umpire and past the fieldsman straight. Four runs. Straight to Sean Pollock. Darren Lehman has to get back. A direct hit. Now that's uh, quite interesting. Might be referred to the third umpire. They're going to take an overthrow anyway. Dave Orchard hasn't made any signals at this stage. So the end result is two runs, but also a referral. It was a brilliant throw. Ponting uh, slaps it away on the outside. And Pollock, quick as a flash. But the batsman is well home. Brian Jerling is the TV umpire. The man from uh, Port Elizabeth. And he didn't have uh, any difficulty with that one. Worked away leg side. Sean Pollock has uh, strayed a little bit leg side first up and pays the penalty. Four more runs. That's a glorious strike though from Darren Lehman. Well, the mark for me of Darren Lehman's innings has been his placement. He's continually found gaps. And just using the pace of that delivery there, fielders had no chance. Very clever indeed. In fact, if we have a look at this again, you'll see that it's actually uh, on off stump and just a fraction outside off stump. So it's worked beautifully. So a boundary off the first ball, the over. Got him. Around the legs. Trying to run down the track and give himself a little bit of room to work again around the corner on the leg side. Lehman departs and Pollock strikes. Not too much emotion though in the middle from the boys in green. Well, that's always the danger when you uh, go over to the off stump as a left-hander. And Pollock saw him coming, I think, and just kept it straight. Lehman too far across on that occasion. And uh, fine knock from Darren Le Lehman. 39 of just 37 deliveries. Jimmy Maher it is. He's the uh, man in form. Two man of the match awards in the last couple of knocks. I thought that they might be tempted for the Brett Lee. Well, he got 40-odd in about 30-odd deliveries in the last match, and uh, if he can uh, repeat the same, he hasn't got many overs left to do it in, of course. But certainly, I've been very impressed with uh, Jimmy Marr.
shows the depth of uh, Australian cricket that uh, men like him can come in and uh, to the manner born really looking for two should be able to come back for the second quite comfortably Nicky Bier down there at uh, third man had to cover a lot of ground leg side there are cries of catcher Sean Polis getting underneath it he should take this he does he was obviously unsighted for a while there in the end decided that he's got to go for it so Ricky Ponting departs it's the end of a wonderful wonderful knock from Ricky Ponting certainly was a pleasure watching him play today he's a talented batsman but he's on his way back to the change room now and the whole of Goodyear Park rise to the Australian captain and quite rightly so flicks a full toss low full toss on the uh, leg stump didn't quite get it, get it in the middle and Pollock is underneath it takes a simple catch and Pollock I think breathes uh, a huge sigh of relief so that's the end of a wonderful knock 129 Ricky Ponting off 126 balls only Australia now 266 for 5 Ian Harvey the next man in didn't play in the last match before back in at the expense of uh, Shane Watson another young man who's been blooded on this tour straight drive mccain has got some work to do here he's very quick though oh bad luck got to it and the ball just uh, rolled up along his body against his body the momentum forced it before oh, it was a lovely shot by Ian Harvey who's just come in timed it absolutely beautifully unlucky to a bold 48 gone two remaining 271 for five Harvey's got connection with that, he's hit a straight to the field of the oak, sweeping on the offside, so Sean Pollock picks up a belated wicket. So Harvey didn't last too long, Graham Smith has got a big smile on his face, he's the catcher, and Australia lose another one. Well, it was a brilliant shot from Ian Harvey, gave himself a little bit of room, and hit it like an absolute rocket, middled it, timed the ball perfectly from the moment he came in. But Graham Smith has got huge buckets for hands, and... Uh, made no mistake with that one so Ian Harvey gone for six 274 for six Brett Lee is the next man in for Australia down the ground it's well struck there's a fieldsman getting there just inside the rope for four Beautifully placed by Jimmy Ma. Clubbed away. And there's confirmation of the four just bouncing in front of that line. Question's got to be asked is uh, why was Andrew Hall in so far? It's all about boundaries at this stage of the innings and uh, Andrew Hall was some uh, 30 metres I reckon inside that rope. Had him in back on it. Would have caught him. Square to Rhodes, another single. This is a big total. By Australia, there's still one ball to go. I don't think Brett Lee will be looking to uh, play any defensive strokes here. Track is very good for batting now. It's a lot quicker than it was when we started this morning. Slower ball from Jacques Callas. It is a good hit from Brett Lee, and it's gone for six. That is a terrific hit. Over long off for six. What a way to finish the innings. No wonder he's smiling. Well, he read it well, didn't he? I think he thought that Callis would bowl the slower delivery. And what a magnificent strike. And it just kept going and going and going. Yes, he's happy with that. So what a big total from Australia. High five between the two batsmen in the middle. 290 for six as we have another look at that massive hit.
Ron Brettley. He probably predicted that Jock Callis was going to be bowling uh, the slower delivery. Andrew Hall this time was right back on the right, but no chance whatsoever. So what a very, very good performance by Australia after Ricky Ponting won the toss this morning and decided to bat on a track which had a little bit of grass on it and was a little bit on the slow side initially. They weathered that storm and from about a 20 over mark they decided to really step on the gas. The star of the show, Ricky Ponting, 129 off 126 deliveries but uh, also some good contributions from Darren Lehman. Bet on the run of ball for his 39. Solidity from Gilchrist, a little bit unusual for him. 34 off 59 deliveries and then a bit of fun at the tail. Partnerships were good, 40 for the first wicket, 47 for the second, 56 for the third, 119 of just 92 balls to the fourth team, Ponting and Lehman was the pick of them, and then just also a little bit of a uh, flutter at the tail as well from Australia. So 290 for six off their 50 overs, and South African bowlers, well, they started off pretty well, but some of them got a pasting. Four of them bowling 10, and Pollock and Telemark is picking two apiece. Lunchtime it is, we'll see you after lunch. Here we go for the first ball of the South African innings. Bang on target, bit of movement back towards the left-hander as well. Bottom edge, and he's off the mark and they're away. South Africa with a boundary. Perhaps not exactly where he wanted to go though. No, feet a little bit stationary here and swinging hard at it, but obviously the intent is shown. Unlike the first uh, two on the internationals, uh, the first three, that one is just pulled, got a bottom edge and beaten Adam Gilchrist on the leg side. But the intense wide one. And now South Africa chasing 290. They're going to have to be going from over one. It's bang on target. Can't do too much with that. Harry Kirsten's done well just to tuck it around the corner. And Brett Lee tidies up as they come back for two. Nick, first one gone. Healthy Nick from Gary Kirsten. So Glenn McGrath has got him again. So disappointment for Kirsten as he turns and walks towards the change room. Simple catch for Gilchrist. And the Australians have got off to a good start. We have to say it again, McGrath's got his man, Kirsten, wide one, faint edge, Gil Chris takes a simple cat, disappointment for Kirsten. He goes for three, and South Africa now, seven for one. Interesting change, Andrew Hall is uh, coming out to bat number three. We could fall in cheaply, so uh, obviously South Africa deciding that they've got to get on, on with things. He's a naturally aggressive player, averaging uh, just over 25, 25 and a half in his uh, 20 one international games so far. Just the 150. Worked leg side. In Harvey. Is at uh, deep backward square. Two more runs to Andrew Hall. That should be out and is outside the off stump. Flash at it. Well caught at second slip. McGrath strikes again. The end of Andrew Hall. Well, you were just uh, looking to see what his, whether he's determined what his role was uh, coming in at one down. He's flashed at this one outside the off stump, and this is the reason why he hasn't been allowed to really play the pinch at his role. The bowlers have been absolutely spot on this, uh, in this Australian lineup, and an easy catch to Jimmy Maher to his right. This is the end of Andrew Hall. South Africa lose the second wicket on 14. Jock Callis, he's the man that'll take up the challenge. That's cut away, it'll run away for four, that's a good shot. Ever so slightly wide, back of a length. Smith is onto it pretty quickly. 
it is a good shot as you just mentioned uh, not too much wide not too wide but uh, he's half back and half forward but he's kept his eye on the ball he's played through the line and that's why he's got enough bat on it to go through the gap he's a big man so uh, you'll see him play a lot of shots like that Pat because of his height inside edge again just beaten by pace I fancy coming back for two it's a big field he'll make it easily that's two good runs by Smith uh, he put his head down and ran he's put the field under pressure inside edge is squeezed away Again, two runs. That's pulled away powerfully. That's the shot I was meaning. 11th over. 32 for two. Well, if he'd hit, could that have been out? Smith was on the back foot, pulling away. He probably feels it. This well, I'm, I'm interested in looking through. He's thrown left-handed. You're right. Ian Harvey has thrown the ball in left-handed. And a direct hit certainly would have been out by over a meter. Bat still in the air. Two meters, maybe. Oh, what a difference that makes. Instead of him running around picking up right-handed, it's two or three steps, the batsman's in, you pick it up left-handed. Well. <laughs> Callis down the wicket over extra cover. That'll bounce once and go away. Twice into the boards. Top shot from Jock Callis. Just what South Africa need now. Oh, two good boundaries. One. This one uh, has to match the one Smith hit in the previous over of Gillespie. Just making him enough room and uh, plays it safely it's a good firm solid shot by Jack Callis of Gillespie takes him to 20 South African score 38 for 2 it's very well hit and he repeats the dose just one short one meter short of the boundary and at the end of the uh, 12th over 42 for 2 Nicely played by Smith. That could run away for four. Yes, this is a very good shot, Pat. He's kept his balance and uh, just finds the little gap past Ricky Ponting, who positioned himself at uh, short mid wicket. Very well played. He just closed the face at the right time, finds the gap. And Smith goes to 24, his fourth boundary. And this one will give him even more confidence because it's come off the bat of uh, Bradley. And it's gone again through the same area. I don't think it'll go for four though. McGrath tags it down. It'll just be the three. End of the 13th over. 51 for two. Goodness me, didn't expect that, that's for sure. Leading edge straight back to him. He had to stretch and couldn't quite grab it. And missed on the second chance as well. Well, there's a let off for Graham Smith. It's short. He looks to play it away on the onside. Didn't quite get to him quickly enough. And uh, leading edge. How did he miss that? Well, I think got the shock of his life. Came back uh, fairly quickly. Timed his jump okay. And then uh, just put it over the bar. It's leg side. It'll be uh, a leg by. Dave Orchard will confirm that. Just over six and a half required. Eight wickets in hand. Catch! Cries of catch it, but uh, disappearing pretty quickly. Good timing from Graham Smith. The outfield, outfield is fairly quick now. And that's going to run away for four. That's a good shot. Well, he's very, very strong uh, in that area, is Graham Smith. We saw him play a couple of similar shots off Brett Lee a little bit earlier. 
And this one, he just leans into it. Timing is uh, absolutely perfect. Fine shot. 31 he is now, 41 balls. This time behind square. And just a single to finish the over. 14 overs gone now. 58 for two. Slice that back with a square on the offside. That's going quickly. That's four runs. Good pace too. 153.1 k's per hour. And a bit of a stare from Brett Lee. Well, if looks could kill, Graham Smith would be a dead man. And he's not bothered at all, and uh, I'm not surprised. It was a good shot. Managed to get it past that man that's square, just behind square in the cover position. And that was a better shot. He stayed with that one. Whoopsie. Uh -huh. Little bit of an elbow. Love it. Standing his ground, the fast bowler. It's a good shot. Very, very good shot indeed. That's good pace again from Brett Lee. Over 150 k's per hour and smacked back with a square on the onside for four. Well, this is great stuff. Superb stuff from the young left-hander. That was the first one. Followed by that. Whack. Gee, that's a good shot. Plenty of time. He's picked it up and uh, put it away beautifully. 50 partnership in 51 balls. To a wide mid-off. Darren Lehman. To finish the over. So that's a good over for South Africa. 15 overs gone now. 67 for... To a wide mid-off, Darren Lehman. To finish the over, so that's a good over for South Africa. 15 overs gone now. 67 for two. Hi. 15 overs gone, 67 for two. Callison Smith in the middle at the moment. Partnership of 53 and 52 balls, that's good going. Batting to come, Mackenzie Rhodes, Boucher, Pollock and also Bier. Ian Harvey went for six in his first over. Is about to start his second. Oh! Got it. He's got that through. Gee, that's a good start after drinks break. Graham Smith, who has played some wonderful strokes in the brief little cameo at the moment, is now on his way back to the pavilion. Bit of movement through the air. Has taken care of Graham Smith. Well, we saw Ian Harvey do exactly that. In the last ball of his last over. And again, just a little bit of uh, in-swing. And the ball held its own off the track. And that was the end of Graham Smith. The maybe a little lapse of concentration with the drinks break. After a magnificent uh, over against Brett Lee. He'll be disappointed with that. He's gone for 41. And Neil McKenzie is the next man in. McKenzie playing in his second match of this series. Came in uh, at Bochestrum. And together with... Callis put on over 50. Straight back past Ian Harvey. Obviously got a finger on that. And uh, wasn't too far away from the stumps of the bowler's end. The chase is on. Ricky. Correction. Glenn McGrath and Jason Gillespie doing the tag teamwork. And he's off the mark with two. Nice and solid from Neil McKenzie. That was a lovely sound out of the middle of the bat. Running away for four. McKenzie hasn't moved. Well, this is a magnificent shot. It's an authentic cricket shot. Going down the leg side and just flicked away through mid-wicket by McKenzie. Beautiful timing, I must say. He's come in and timed the ball uh, sweetly right from the word go. That's prompted uh, the sweeper to, to be put out on the offside. Run rate at the moment is uh, just over four and a half. So it's okay at this stage from South Africa. They need to go at uh, over six from here, 
Good shot of the leg side. Glenn McGrath's not going to be able to track that one down. The outfield is fairly quick. It's going to run away for four. That's a good start to the over. Well, when he's in form too, Jacques Kellis. Not many better players around than him. Beautifully placed. And McGrath's long legs are never, ever going to win that race. Need one or two good overs. Pushing that square on the offside for a single, so five off two. In the air, sliced away, and that'll run away for four. Slightly wide. Yes, Neil McKenzie here, I don't think will be too happy with the stroke, but uh, very pleased with the result. He's just had a little bit of a flay at that, no control, and it's gone through the vacant second slip area for four, and it's the third man. Nice, nice, Ian. Nice. Nine and a half. Oh, damn it. That's through, and it could go for four. Well fielded by Matthew Hayden. That's a top effort by the big man down there. He's covered all of 50, 60 meters. Full length dive. That's definitely a going for four. McKenzie has got enough on it. A beat to Ziggler's feet. At 45 on the offside. And they're waiting to see if he had any contact with the discovery life sponges and the ball and it looks like he's pretty clean there but maybe need to see from another angle the umpires are waiting watch your course Pete. that's a good bit of fielding and that's uh, only three two McGrath's legs it's become a bit predictable And he's not happy. He's a better fielder than that. And you would have felt. Oh, well, there's a mix-up. Mr. Sloppy from Australia. Not what they require right now to keep the pressure on. And I tell you what, if you're a spinner, and it's worked away like that, you're not happy. It's going to be close. Adam Gilchrist thinks he's got his man. What's your call then, Steve? I think he's safe. That's normally your banker ball, mid wicket. Well, mate, I think he's out. Oh, that's a good call. That is a good call. I initially thought it was a direct hit, you see. But the fact that he's had to catch it, that's the extra frame. He's in. Yeah, he's in by meters. Millimeters. Yeah, you're right, but that's your, that's your banker as a spinner, your mid-wicket ball, all me singles there, uh, should be at a premium, you don't want to score there, you want to okay, shut it down. Oh. Well, he's gone back to give himself room and has beaten everything, the batsman, the keeper, but McGrath's got around, now pick up three, I don't know if he hit it or buys. Yep, the umpire signaled bias. So it's beaten everybody. He's Stop come it. back, he's rocked forward and then chopped back. Oh, that's just so <laughs> that's gone right over the Stop top it. of leg stump. The bale. And it's nearly clipped the top of the bale, but Gilchrist missing it as well. And three valuable runs for South Africa. Ah nice. Hey, work, nice. <laughs> 
And uh, interesting shot there, and he's got it past. As Kellis, and they've come through for two. Yeah! Oh, he's got him, he's got him down the wicket, and straight back at Darren Lehman. Good bowling. And that's the end of that partnership, 71 off 77 deliveries. Well, this uh, team is on a roll, the Australians. They just haven't allowed South Africa to get in a position of dominance. Every time they look, looked it, a wicket has fallen. And here again, Darren Lehman has got the breakthrough the skipper wanted. So the partnership of 71 comes to an end. And Jacques Callas departs for 43. South Africa now 138 for four. Well, South Africa's favourite one-day cricketer, Jonty Rhodes. Played so well in Pochettstrom. And if anybody can uh, increase this run rate to the extent that South Africa need to do it, this man can. And with uh, Neil McKenzie at the other end playing extremely well, he's got 36 of 44 deliveries. Uh, we're in for lots of fun in the next hour. Target 291, total 138 for four. Good shot, beautiful shot. And he's pierced the field, Miller will run away for four. At last, the boundary for South Africa. Well, Roger, that's proof that uh, even in this situation, if you do play straight, you're going to get runs and you're going to get value for your shots. Gets nicely across. And uh, all the way behind that beautiful balance, just uh, front elbow up. No flourish, well timed. John D. Rhodes has stripped it away for four. That's just the start they needed after the drinks break. Poor delivery. The only uh, poor delivery really that Daryl Neiman has bowled and uh, Rhodes was onto it like a flash. Tucked around the corner. Brings up his 50. Once again, he's consistent. Well done, Neil McKenzie. Teammates appreciating this knock. Yeah, he's just moved on from his form. Butch came in there after being left out for a few games. Looked like he's never been out. Striking it beautifully from ball one. Oh, right there, Dan. So McKenzie's gone to his fifth on. one-day international 50. Wicked, eh, <laughs> Spot in our celebrity league. Brought to you by All Out Refit. Gone for that. And it's a good hit. Very, very good hit, that one. And an important boundary. It's a good shot. It's a very good shot over extra cover. Just the one bounce and four runs. They needed that one. That's a fine strike from Neil McKenzie. It's a good shot. Two men have got some work to do. And four. Another boundary. That's a very good over. 40 overs gone. 200 up on the board. 202 for four. Ten overs remaining. They've got to go at uh, 8.9 from here. Six wickets in hand. Got it. Metal stop. So Brett Lee has struck. That's an important wicket. Neil McKenzie with fine leg up inside the circle. Just waltzed across and tried to tickle it around the corner. Unfortunately for South Africa, he's on his way back. And Brett Lee, he's got this right. It's one of the better ones around. Rolling at the end with the older ball. Full and straight. Here we see it. And it's hit the base of middle and off. Mackenzie come across to try and flick him on the leg side. Instead of playing his strength. Neil Mackenzie, 67. Bold lead, 88 balls, 4-4s, four 46 scoring shots. Got him! Straight through him. That's a very, very good delivery from Brett Lee. So, two and two balls. And that's put South Africa on the back foot. That, I'm afraid, is a big wicket. That is absolutely right on the money. Brett Lee's got it right. 145k an hour Yorker, hitting the base of Midland leg. And he's certainly enjoyed this. He's got it right. 
Boucher, a nasty delivery to get first ball. It's right on the money. And Brett Lee showing his appreciation. Unbelievable, as you say, the man for the moment. So, Boucher to Parks, where there's a little mate in front of them. South Africa now, 202 for six. Sean Pollock coming out to the crease. Face the hat-trick ball. Brett Lee. 28 years of age, 156 matches, 650s, averaging 24. Runs per six balls, 4.9. Highest score of 75 versus Zimbabwe. They've gone up. The Australians have gone up, and so has David Orchard. Sean Pollock wasn't going to walk, so it must have been uh, a faint tickle. He was going to make the umpire do the work. And Jason Gillespie back in the attack, and he's picked up a wicket. The skipper it is this time. And South Africa are in more trouble. Yeah. Pollock will be disappointed with this. Gillespie, though, does the business for his captain. No foot movement. Just playing at that one. Must have been a pretty faint nick. But loud enough. Bumpar Orchard. He stood his ground. So Sean Pollock goes for two. South Africa now 207 for seven. Nicely cut away, there'll be two there. Well, I think he'll be here pretty quick, you'll fancy two and get it. That's firmly struck, that'll be four. That's a wonderful shot from Nicky Boyer. Top class drive to the extra cover. And that's out. Bottom edge. Nicky Boy has gone. And Brett Lee strikes again. Well, Brett Lee went for 23, 26 in his first three overs. And he's come back and really has put the nails in the coffin for South Africa. Two in two deliveries, his first over back. And then this one, Pierre yeah, had no option but to go for it. And just uh, a thick edge there, Gilchrist does the rest. Well, with that dismissal, I'm afraid that is probably close to game, set and match. I thought it was the bottom edge. Could have been the top edge. Makes no difference. That's the end of Nicky Boyer. He's gone for 14 or 14 deliveries. Now South Africa 224 for eight. McCarm and, and Tini, the number 10 batsman, walks to the crease to join uh, John T. Rhodes. John T. Rhodes, uh, spare a thought for him. 39 off 37. That's played another fine knock. Outside edge. McCarm and Tini will come back for two. And that ends the over. 45 gone, 228 for eight. That's swept by John T. Rhodes, and that's gone for four. That's belted through the offside. It'll just be a single, I think. Well, Rhodes will take it on. He knows it's a big field. That's it away powerfully over extra cover. That'll go for four. Top shot, John T. Rhodes. Well played, my friend. That's a good shot. Well, what a wonderful way to go to your 50. Again, he gave himself the room outside that off stump. Lee coming from wide and uh, John T. Rhodes slashing it away in the air and uh, no chance for the sweeper to stop that one. Well, can they? That's driven down the ground, that's four. That'll end the other with a four from Makai and Tini. Is there another twist in the tail? 47 gone, 248 for eight. 
That'll be a single. No, it won't. It's going to go for four, is it? It's well fielded by Andy Bickle, who's on the field. The kind teeny hit that so powerfully, but it's a long boundary. And as usual, Jonty Rhodes, uh, majority of his runs coming in singles. Slow delivery has bowled him. Jason Gillespie has done the job. Well, he tried his best, did Macarantini. He really did. But it was a fine change of pace. A little off-break action. And he was through with the shot before the ball had arrived. And uh, Jason Gillespie gets that wicket. And that surely will be the end for South Africa with just Roger Telemarkis to come. It's the second ball of the over, the third, I beg your pardon, and still three balls that Telemarkis has to face. He's gone for 11, Bol Gillespie, 251 for nine. So Brett Lee to John T. Rhodes. The equation is too daunting to even think about. Rhodes has a slot, it's gone high, is it out, yes it is, that is a wonderful catch, that ends it, 2.53 all out South Africa, 49th over, and Brett Lee picks up his fourth wicket. That was a, an amazing catch, it went many a mile in the air, and it uh, was in the shadow, Ian Harvey the man who caught it, Rhodes death or glory and it had to be the death I'm afraid too much to do and Harvey kept his eyes on it beautiful catch and uh, that's the end of a very very fine knock from John T. Rhodes gone for 56 in 48 deliveries and that's the end of the match South Africa all out 253 yes Roger not only the end of the match but that's the end of South Africa being able to win the series 57 run win that's a big one in one day cricket all credit to the Australians, that man there, he played exceptionally well, I thought. Came good just when the team needed him. He was backed up by the bowling. Well, it's been a fine one-day game, hasn't it? Uh, 540 runs scored. And uh, the crowd here in Bloemfontein have seen some uh, excellent batting. They've seen some quick bowling. It's been uh, a wicket or a pitch that uh, there's been a lot of runs in. Nico Praturius uh, predicted that at the start. And sure enough, uh, a victorious uh, Australian side have uh, won this fourth match. So that gives them three wins and the one tie. And they cannot lose this series. Yes, and South African side obviously will be disappointed now. And uh, tonight's schedule is uh, the election of the next team to, to complete the series. That will be interesting. When will we hear that? Tonight? Well, I think it's going to be announced tonight, and uh, that'll start on the first squad, which uh, take up the challenge in the Durban match on Wednesday. It's a day-nighter. But certainly those men there have had good value for money. A lot of them going back today. And their team have really done them proud. And that squad, uh, South African squad, will be picked for these last three matches. And uh, don't be surprised if you see quite a few changes. There is the scorecard. Smith was impressive up front. Kirsten went cheaply again, as did Hall. And Callis was looking threatening. Mackenzie played extremely well, as did Rhodes. But in the end, there was no one that really uh, went on to get a big score. And that was the difference between the two sides. Just 12 extras. High class. 202 and in with a, with a shout then. But then they lost three quick wickets. And that really uh, was the problem. And uh, all in all a solid performance.